Welcome to a brief tutorial about how you can use your Ames Web growth data for students to fulfill requirements for the annual professional performance review in New York. Ames Web has been approved by New York for annual professional performance reviews. It meets New York State Education Department initiatives and regulations. Why select Ames Web for APPR? Well, first, it's cost effective. You have one tool that you can use for dual purposes. First and foremost, you can always use Ames Web for response to intervention. This is what it's been designed for, and this is really where schools become successful when they use Ames Web as part of their RTI program. Additionally, because Ames Web tracks student growth so well, and we have new student growth norms available, you can also use it as part of your professional performance reviews when you need to submit student growth data. Ames Web is under contract with the New York State BOCES and Regional Information Centers, so if you choose to use Ames Web for APPR or for RTI, you can get New York State aid reimbursement for your Ames Web subscriptions when you order Ames Web through your local BOCES. Another reason to select Ames Web for APPR is that teachers will spend less time testing and have more time for teaching. Our assessments are brief assessments that take only one to ten minutes to give, with many of those being able to be group administered, and this allows teachers quick, easy, and immediate feedback on student growth. We offer measures in a variety of areas, from early literacy to early numeracy for kindergarten and first grade students. We also offer MIVE, which is our Spanish version of early literacy for grades K and 1. Each of the tests for early literacy, early numeracy, or MIDE have four or five subtests. You may use any or all of those subtests to meet your data requirement needs. And we also offer oral reading, MAZE, which is a silent reading measure, math computation, math concepts and applications, spelling and written expression, and also behavior. Ames Web measures only take a few minutes to give. Many may be administered by group, meaning you could assess your entire class in a measure in perhaps 3 to 10 minutes. Many measures also offer browser-based scoring, which allows the teacher to score right online without using excess paper. However, we still also offer our paper-pencil options for assessments for any of the measures that you choose to use. In addition, Ames Web is a reliable and valid tool to use to measure student growth. Ames Web assessments were developed using over 35 years of research, thousands of peer-reviewed journal articles, published studies, book chapters, internal research, and more. Starting in the 2012-2013 school year, Ames Web also will include growth norms that are subdivided into groupings based upon a student's beginning of the year benchmark score. Because a student's rate of improvement is being compared to others at his or her same starting achievement level, Ames Web excels as a fair tool to use within a teacher effectiveness program. You're getting very fair, reliable, and valid results about how your students are growing and how that compares to other students' growth across the country. Ames Web also uses parallel test forms, covering the same content at each screening period fall, winter, and spring per grade level, making it well suited for measuring growth. Reason being is we don't change the ruler throughout the year. We have one consistent ruler per measure, and your student's growth is measured against that ruler or assessment. We want to keep those things consistent so that every bit of growth that you see or change in data is due to changes in student performance, not because we've changed the difficulty of the test within that grade level. Lastly, Ames Web contains an easy to use, statistically sound, and very transparent scoring method that converts growth norm percentiles into your New York State APPR 20 or 15 point rubrics. Ames Web will provide this service for you. Additional reasons for selecting Ames Web for APPR is that it meets the following New York State Education Department initiatives and regulations. Section 117.3 of the regulations of the Commissioner of Education and Guidance on RTI screenings, which are to be conducted three times per year for early identification and at-risk students. Ames Web also supports policy NYCRR Section 200.4, which allows districts to use an RTI approach for learning disability identification purposes. 
Lastly, AIMSWEB is officially listed as an APPR-approved third-party vendor student assessment for use by school districts and BOCES in teacher and principal evaluations as a growth measure in grades K through 8. AIMSWEB also provides a brief step-by-step -step manual that you can use to map your students' native scores to teacher and principal evaluation metrics. Again, AIMSWEB does this process for you. However, I'll walk through it so you can see how it's done should you choose to do it manually. As mentioned earlier, there are two options for administration and scoring of AIMSWEB measures depending on the measure. First, there's individually administered measures, which may be done either via paper-pencil scoring or browser-based scoring, which allows you to score the measure right online as the student's taking the test. Or, some of our measures may be group-administered. I'll talk more about administration of these measures shortly. First, let's talk briefly about test security. Test security is integral to APPR. APPR requires independent examiners to administer and or score the AIMSWEB assessments. It varies slightly depending on the specific measure being administered. The AIMSWEB system offers a feature that disables any teacher level user from having access to the benchmark probes or the ability to enter or edit benchmark data. This does not prevent teacher level users from viewing any of the reports or conducting progress monitoring for students. I'll show you how to use this feature momentarily. Districts and schools should set and enforce their own additional local policies to ensure test security and ethics surrounding these and other measures used for APPR purposes. To do so, log in as a manager, click districts or schools depending on what level of management access you have, click edit next to the district or school you'd like to change the settings for, and then simply click teachers can edit benchmark data from yes to no and click save. This then prevents anyone with teacher level access from entering or editing benchmark data, from viewing or downloading benchmark probes, or from using the browser-based scoring for benchmark purposes. Teachers will still have access to progress monitoring probes, browser-based scoring for progress monitoring, and all benchmark or progress monitoring reports that are available for their students. Independent examiners may be set up with special accounts so that they can have access to the benchmark probes, browser-based scoring, and benchmark data. Okay, let's talk about administration and how you can administer these measures and be in compliance with APPR. For the individually administered tests, such as RCBM, Test of Early Literacy, Test of Early Numeracy, and MIDE, our Spanish Early Literacy measure, your school or local education agency will need to provide an independent examiner. Typically, with Ames Lab, a classroom teacher administers and scores these measures, but criteria for the teacher and principal evaluation require an educator other than the classroom teacher or principal being evaluated to actually administer and score the measures. You may do so via paper pencil or browser-based scoring. For browser-based scoring, the process is simple. The independent examiner will sit across from the student, have the student read the material or listen to it orally, and then the examiner will score on a screen instead of on paper. The student completes the test as the examiner is scoring it. Once the examiner is finished, the scores are automatically loaded into AIMSWEB. Let's take a look at a demo of how browser-based scoring works. For browser-based scoring users, the examiner will log into the system, click Edit Scores, click the Assess Now link, and begin to administer the test by clicking Instructions, reading the instructions to the student, clicking Start Timer, and then clicking on any words that the student read in error. The same process works for early literacy and early numeracy. Once the timer pops up, you'll select the last word the student attempted, and the passage is automatically scored. If you click OK, you can move on to the next probe and then the final probe, and that will complete the benchmark or universal screening process. All three scores are instantly reported to the EAMSWEB system, and the median score is calculated. Once you're finished, you can click back to scoring and then view your students' results. There are tutorials for browser-based scoring available should you need additional assistance on how to administer and score the measure 
via this quick and easy tool to use. For our group administered tests, any group administered measure such as our maze, MCAP, MCOMP, spelling, or written expression could either be administered by the teacher but scored by an independent score for APPR or administered and scored by the independent examiner. For group administration, the teacher or the other examiner will administer the measure to an entire class at one time. Each student will write his or her responses on a printed test form or booklet. After the completed test materials are collected, the independent examiner will score the measures. Again, a teacher or the examiner may administer it, but only the independent examiner will score the measures using the scoring criteria provided in each measure's administration and scoring manual. Once the group testing is completed, the examiner will score it and enter those scores into the AIMSWeb system online. The process of entering data online is simple and easy to do. Let's take a look at how this is done. Simply go to aimslab.com, log into your account, click Edit Scores, and simply begin typing in student scores. When you're finished, click Save. Your data are now entered, stored, and ready to view via various AIMSLAB reports. Now that you have the results from your AIMSLAB measures, one of the strengths of AIMSLAB is how it assesses student growth using reliable valid data. Students' growth, as measured by AIMSLAB, may be used as part of APPR. As a feature for New York State AIMSLAB users, Pearson will make it easier for educators to map AIMSLAB growth data to the APPR metric, saving you time. I'm going to walk through what this process looks like in manual format. The mapping process is similar for any of the AIMSLAB measures used for APPR. We're going to demonstrate using our oral reading measure how the mapping process works. First, we'll look at a student's growth from fall to spring in this example. Should you only have half a year's data for a student, for example, just fall to winter, this process also works. However, today I'm going to be demonstrating a year's worth of data for a student. This is John. John's score in the fall on an RCBM measure for grade 4 was 60 words correct per minute. Winter was 78 and spring was 100 words correct per minute. This means that John gained 40 words over the course of a 36-week school year. If we take his growth of 40 words correct per minute over 36 weeks, we get an average weekly growth rate of 1.11 words correct per minute per week for a student. This is his rate of improvement, or ROI. I now want to compare John to all other students who had a score of 60 in the fall. The score of 60 for John falls at the 9th percentile compared to all 4th graders in our national sample. That score falls in the percentile range for our growth tables between the 1st and 19th percentile. So what I do is go over to the 4th grade growth tables. I look at the percentile range in which John's score fell in the fall. Remember, he was at the 9th percentile. So I go to the grouping for students between the 1st and 19th percentile. John's growth rate was 1.11, which falls in the growth percentile level of 55. So what this means is compared to all other students who had a score in the fall between the 1st and 19th percentile, John performed in the middle of that pack. This means that John performed as well or better than 55% of all of the students who, in the fall nationally, had a score that fell between the 1st and 19th percentile. Then we can map this to the crosswalk that's available as part of the APPR process in New York. So if I go to the 40 to 59 range, because John's score was a 55, I now see that a teacher would be awarded 10 points for John's performance. To find the educator evaluation score, the teacher's score becomes the average point value for all of those students in the class. For example, we'll take John's point value of 10 and add it to all of the other students and then divide by the number of students and round to one decimal place. This recommended mapping method applies to principals as well as to teachers. For a principal, the evaluation score would be an average point score for all the students in the school. If you have more questions about Ames Lab or APPR, contact your Pearson representative, Jim Simone in South New York, or Mike Grau if you're in Northern or Upstate New York. 
I wish you success and your students success. Have a great day. Thank you.